Kanijo America, Ace here, back at it again with another visual novel. This one is, uh, 1,000 Lies. Yes. As you can see, the video quality might be a bit different than the, the, the one from before, yeah? That's because I switched software. So in this one, you won't be able to see my, my face. Ain't, ain't that just a sad thing, yeah? Let's get into this. What language am I? Espanol or English? Doesn't English just mean Spanish in English? I don't know. That's probably created it, yeah. Ooh, there it is. One thousand lies. Just in case the music will be really loud. Alright. Mm, going back. Alright, new game. <clears throat> There's a lot of characters in this one. Much like the origin of our dreams, three youths forged their friendships out of unclear beginnings. Hold on. The innocence of their childhood souls knew nothing of the alternative, the alternative motives that the jaded mind of an adult might have. It's a pity that no decision knew the virtue of fabrication which lies beyond the chromatic spectrum of the consequences that adults insist on simplifying only as either black or white. So they maintain that lies should not be told. Lying is wrong, obviously, with empty words that wage their futile battle against human nature, pretending to know of what they speak. It's ironic how, rather than erasing lies by teaching us not to fabricate falsehoods, we learn to make them better. After all, who honestly seeks the truth? <clears throat> Ouch. We only open our ears to confirmations from our biases. Still going. And that's strange, because in my opinion, there is no one who is more sincere in their words. I wonder who's talking right now. Than the greatest liar of them all. Ooh, I have a piano. I don't know voice to say this in. Notes fell readily from my memory and onto the piano keys at my fingertips, recreating the trite sound of Maestro Debussy. I hope that I said that right. Esteemed melody. I play for no alter... Wait. I play for no... I think my mic a little bit. I play for no attentive listeners in no grand auditorium, only one man within earshot of my tune, as weak with his words as with his posture. He shifted his eyes about in a mixture of fear and doubt. <clears throat> Even if I were to close my eyes, I could draw his features in the void with nothing more than my memories. Every feature, every pulsing movement, the signs of his face that age had yet to win his long battle against his youth. I can still taste the crisp, bittersweet flavor my mind gave to the air when, on that day, I found him, staring so intently at the starry sky, as he, as if he wanted to leave the rest of the world behind. I have a list, but just let y'all know you. That infamous night, quietly overseen by Maestro Debussy, would change everything forever.
Come on! Wanna- wait, I don't even know how old this boy is. Come on, wanna go see how haunted that mansion really is? The boy could hardly contain his excitement as he spoke. His two friends, his only audience, frowned in response, reluctant to give him their answer. They couldn't be fooled by the superstition that's ghosts, nor were, there, or were they motivated to spend their time to disproving their existence. Yet, somehow, they just couldn't find it in themselves to say no to the eager friend. Perhaps due to his eloquence, okay. or to be frank, his persistence. Their entrance was heralded by abandoned spider webs, ramshackled walls, and frayed curtains. Unfortunately, there was no specters to speak of. The boy had little need of his ghost now, though, for the trembling signs of fear that gripped his friend served more than adequately, more than adequately, as his entertainment for the day. So our oh, words, so our intrepid leader took point, taking his exploration party deeper into the dust vowed interior of the old mansion. He brought his attention to a single book laid atop an aging podium, a sure sign that no pages of content were more worthy of reading than those found within the centerpiece on display. Its words were still legible. It only just, if only just, and apart from the rest of the I can't read to tease on keeping close relationships unbroken it offered a dire warning disgracing that which does not belong to you will bring nothing but punishment the which you love that which you love will inevitably become the greatest of your fears when during the Scythergy, three elements must become two. Which one will you discard? If it had been a spell from the witch's book, the three youths lacked the knowledge to understand it. Nevertheless, they would soon regret having brought life to the words upon the page. From out of the darkness, shackles appeared and bound the three together with unbreakable chains that only they could see. Doomed to keep the other's company. Doomed to keep each other's company eternally. Uh oh. What's about to happen now? Go back to the piano. Hey. Do you think I could learn to play the piano? Are you serious? Why should I bother to teach you? You've had more time to learn than you had. No, that's not what I meant. I was just curious. Well, it's a simple question with a long and complicated answer. So here it is. No, ooh, told him what it was, what it will be, what it always has been. Yeah. What? Why not? Do you really need me to spell it out for you? You're the expert. I shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be hard to tell me what's wrong. What's wrong? Well, where do I begin? For example, those sausage links are you call your fingers. You think there's any instrument that could accommodate you? Well, that sounds like you're just trying to make me go away. I've never heard of anyone not being able to play a piano for such a stupid reason. I suppose that depends on your goals. You can bang away at the keys to your heart content, for example. You're not a very good at you're not very good at hold on here. You're not very good at this Pepsi talk thing, are you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> thing, you know. Gotta read it right. That's pretty. Oh, more of this. It was a strange spell which bound the three youths together. Should they try to spread out and seek their own paths, the chains on their legs would grow tighter, keeping them dis keeping them together. But if two of them agreed to stay close to each other, they could grant the third prisoner, and 
extended length of distance. The links in this, the links in the chain were uninterrupted by obstacles. They only enforced the proximity by which its prisoners must be held. Still, they could find a way to live with their curse, with none but themselves being the wiser to it. And how could anyone believe the three friends have been physically bound by a chain which eludes the sight of everyone but his prisoners, passes through all obstructions, and is untouchable to anyone else? Under the premise that they were used to spend all their times together, none of them thought this instance would harm their lives too much. Using their imagination, they would, they could manage some way to go on with their lives. In time, a change came upon them. Just as the origins of their friendship remained unclear, so too would it be difficult to pin down just what had kept them untied. Yeah? The light of their childhood innocence would die a slow death. Or perhaps even the innocence was another lie. Fabricated to disguise their selfish lo the selfishness. More reading. These were the s these were the thoughts which plagued the leader's mind as he began to silently observe the faces of the ones he called he once called his friends, who had now become unrecognizable to him, and unable to find the words to form his apology, who chose to simply run away. Back to the piano. Come off it already. You didn't come here for a piano lesson. You've got something to say, so, so spit it out already. If you got something to spit, eh, say spit it out already. But the kid merely choked in his words, unable to force his thoughts into the open air. You don't have to say a saying if you don't want to. You're a grown man, and you can make your own decisions. I, just, I thought it was a kid. You don't need to tell me. You don't need me to tell you what to do. Just know that every choice comes with a price. I don't want you to come crying to me later if I were a if I were responsible for your decisions. Through the corner of my eye, I could see that no amount of shaming language would drive him away. Yet he still milled about his own indecisiveness. I sighed audibly making my displeasure with our status quo abundantly clear. Fine. Do what you... Do you want to know what made me want to learn how to play the piano? Yeah, I've been in the impromptu. Oh, these words. Impromptu. Hmm. Change of subject. Surprising even myself. I was never one for improv improvisation. Bringing a close to the piano melody, I pushed myself away from the keys. I raised my hands up, as if to display them alongside my words. I'll tell you what spurred me to play this instrument. It was after someone told me the most discouraging thing that with the fingers as thick as mine, I would never be able to play an instrument. Oh, what's going to happen now? Hmm. So he ran, struggling against his own loss of breath, into the cruel chains trialing beyond rows up to remind him of their limited length. But that would not stop him. Surrender was beyond his understanding now. No sense of no senseless witchcraft would allow uh, would be allowed to outperform his willpower. He didn't care about the blood or the pain. He would keep on running, empowered by his will, even if his legs were to break. <coughs> the chain stretched with each step with the metallic echo of the lynx breaking beyond him. Groaning under the pleasure, each link in the chain warped and bent to the breaking point. 
struggling to match his, to match the strength of his determination. Though it was the curse, vanished into into the air, leaving no trace that he had ever bound anyone together. Only then did he return to his senses to find out what he had bled and suffered to gain. Solitude in a barren land berft berift of his peers. Give me a dictionary. Even his foot even his footsteps had even his even his footsteps had vanished in the trail behind him. He was truly alone. Never never again would he be able to find the important people he had lost. Oh, One Thousand Lies. Chapter One. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm going to end this episode here, yeah? Oh, based on a true story. That's cool. Oh, based on a story? That should be true. Give me a second. Oh, she's cute. So, I'm going to end this episode of uh, the Gameroid here, yeah? And, uh, yeah, I'll come back next Wednesday with a new episode. So, until then, we love you, world.